Um, so I actually, yeah, let me get back to regular size here. Yeah, so let's go with a uh, second example here. I think we have time to do this. This was much more uh, trouble algebraically. It's similar in the way it's set up. But, um, but man, the algebra is just much more difficult on this one. Uh, suppose that the temperature at a point on a metal plate is measured by this formula, 4x squared minus 4xy plus y squared. And you got this, this ant that's walking on the plate in the circle of radius 5, stuck on that track of being on the circle of radius 5, centered at the origin. The question is then, as this ant walks around this circle, centered at the origin of radius 5, experiencing different temperatures, this multivariable function, different temperatures based on the x and y position, the question is, what is the highest temperature and the lowest temperature encountered by the ant? This is coming straight out of an old final exam question, I think. I just don't have a tag on it as to which one it is. Okay, so there's a function and there's a constraint. We had to dig it out last time. It was subtle, like the way they worded it last time. We actually had to go and kind of get clever as to how we get our function. Here's more obvious. The function is temperature. Okay, and the constraint is the fact that the ant is stuck on this track of being... Well, it's similar to the constraint last time. It's a circle centered at the origin, but it's a different radius this time. This time the radius is 5. Okay, so my lowercase f ends up as my capital T. And my g is just x squared plus y squared minus the 25. You know, equals the 25 and then set it equal to 0. Okay. And so I, I set this up by... Creating this capital F and taking it to partials and making sure they're all zero at the same time. Forcing the gradient on this capital F function to be equal to zero. So x partials, it's, you know, you just get 8x minus 4y minus 2x lambda. That's fine. Y partial, you just get minus 4x plus 2y minus 2y lambda and the lambda partial is just the constraint we get uh, minus x squared minus y squared plus the 25 and these all need to be zero at the same time that symmetry that we had last time doesn't exist here and so so it won't be um, such an easy thing algebraically but we set these all equal to zero. And how you navigate that is up to you. Here's one way. So when I set this equal to zero, I'm going to um, shift over the 4y by adding it to both sides. And, and um, I recognize that this, this 8x and this 2x share something in common. I mean, this 8x and this 2 lambda x both have a 2x in them. Okay. So I'm going to go with this. This idea of, okay, 4y is, is, is different. I, I could have taken out a 2, but um, that will come later. And so I, I, um, basically I'd like to say that when I factor out the 2x, I'm looking at the product. But be careful here. You know, when we do this whole product thing equal to 0, the key is that it's equal to 0. Okay? Please don't try to say that either 2x is 4y or 4 minus lambda is 4y. You know, that, that zero property is the zero property. It has to be set equal to zero. Two numbers multiply to give you zero. One of them has to be zero. Two things multiply to give you 4y. Maybe neither of them are 4y. Anything non-zero, it could be anything. And so, so don't, don't, don't make something, you know, don't do a legal algebra, basically. <laughs> okay. Um, similarly, we can do with, uh, we can solve for, uh, it's going to be a substitution. I don't know if this is the best way, but here we go. Solve for y. There's no division by zero in this. Solve for y and sub it into the other guy. Okay, so if I solve for y, I get x over 2 times the quantity of 4 minus lambda. And I'm going to take that information into the other guy and I have an equation just in x and lambda. Okay, do the same kind of thing where you shift the term that, that um, doesn't have the y in it over. Factor out the 2y, and I could, I could plug in the fact that I know what y is, 
and now I have this equation that's in x and lambda. It's definitely true that, that 2y times the quantity 1 minus lambda is definitely equal to 4x. And I'm solving these simultaneously because I'm taking information from the first one and including it into the second one. And by, by doing that, I end up losing the variable. Uh, now I have this equation in x and lambda. And it'll end up with different cases based on, based on x and lambda. But it is true that basically these twos are going to cancel. And I have x times 4 minus lambda times, times 1 minus lambda is equal to 4x. Another thing that's nice about this is that we see x times something equals to x times something. Technically, you want to just cancel the x's, right? But officially then, by doing that, you are dividing by x. It's possible that x could be 0. So we need to consider that. Just go down that road. If you don't consider it, that's only going to be worth a point or something. But, but we should go down that road. It's, it's on the circle. X being 0 is on the circle. So consider it. See what happens. Okay, so um, yeah, let's take that. Uh, let's see. Let's deviate from this. So my two options are that either x is 0 or 4 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda is 4. One of these is true. It could be that both of these are true. Okay. All right, great. So what does that mean to us? Um, now, let's, let's take this x equals 0. It won't be a long road. We'll, we'll re realize that this is, this is um, not, not going to be useful to us. If x is 0, then what is y? Okay. And if x is 0 and y is 0, you're at the origin. You're not on the circle. So go down the road, technically. But usually it ends in nonsense. If x is 0, then y is 0. So, um, but that's the origin. And that's not on the constraint. Not on the circle. OK. That's our case 1, if you want to call it. So it must be true here, then, that 4 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda is equal to 4. OK. And let's, let's go down that route, see where that leads us. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to do it here. Um, so 4 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda. Let's multiply that out. Don't think that this is now either this guy's 4 or that guy's 4. Remember, that only works for 0, 0 property of multiplication. OK, so, so we multiply out. We say, well, that's 4 minus how many? Minus 5 lambdas plus lambda squared. And conveniently, now we can cancel 4s. And we'll end up with the fact that either lambda is 0 or lambda is 5. Now we can say that. So this, I guess this case 2 is not going to spawn a, a part A and a part B. OK. And so on the one hand, lambda could be 0. On the other hand, lambda could be 5. At this point, I think we can, let's say if I keep this and I go to this next slide. OK. So, so the algebra that I got to to get there is different. But here it is. Let me just uh, finish this off for you. So uh, ignore this algebra that I got to get here. Or I guess I did do it. X is, OK, it is there. OK. I just, I just did it differently by, by not um, by, by moving the 4x over. I don't like that as much. I like this better. So anyway, um, I like what we had done better. So lambda is 0. Or lambda is 5. Remember the connection, though. What's the connection? That y is x over 2 times 4 minus lambda. So if lambda is 0, immediately that means that y is twice x. Right? Lambda is 0. Plug that in. Then y is twice x. There's your relationship between y and x that you were trying to go out and get. 
It happens to be the same one as last time, just a coincidence. <laughs> okay. And then follow that through. Go back to your constraint. Once you get that relationship between y and x, take it into your constraint. Yes, x squared plus y squared is equal to 25. So x squared plus, it's the same thing, 5x squared. And so we divide by, so, so x squared is 5. So x is plus or minus root 5. And y is double that. Those are two points. And then we go down the other route of lambda being equal to 5. Plug that in here. That says that y is the opposite of x over 2. Plug that into your constraint. This time you get x squared plus x squared over 4, or 5 fourths of x squared. 4 fifths. So you get that x squared is 20. And you take your root, you get plus or minus 2 root 5. But remember now, y is negative x over 2. So if x is plus 2 root 5, then y then is uh, a negative root 5. And if x is negative 2 root 5, plugging it in, you'll get that y is root 5. So these are the four points that come out. Yes, there's four points, but it's only going to end up in two different temperatures. Okay. Plug these into the temperature equation, and you'll see that you end up with just two different temperatures. And um, the biggest temperature is the max, and the smallest temperature is the min. Questions? All right, so plug these in, and we get, um, uh, what is this? Uh, zero at the, uh, the places where x is plus or minus root 5 and 125 at the places that x is plus or minus negative 2 root 5. So 0 is your min temperature, and 125 is your max temperature. No argument need necessary after that. So you're done. OK? Um, so uh, let's say I keep that for whatever reason. And then here's that same problem, but done in the uh, Lambda F equals lambda G way. It works out nice. Anyway, so uh, have a good break. Uh, safe travels. I'll see you back here on the 11th. All goes well.